Welcome to Cranes of Rose Sanctuary, where you will learn about cranes and the importance of Audubon's Rose Sanctuary and its conservation work. Cranes are a family of birds with 15 species in all. While 13 of those are found in many other parts of the world, only two species, sandhill cranes and hooping cranes, are found in North America. Of the 15 species, 10 have been identified as either endangered or vulnerable. Of those 15 species, whooping cranes are the least abundant, with a total population of only 836 in 2023. Sandhill cranes, on the other hand, are the most abundant of the crane species, with a population of over 1 million birds that use three different flyways. The vast majority of those cranes come through the central flyway, where Rose Sanctuary is located. However, as we will discuss, even sandhill cranes need conservation efforts in order to survive. While there are six distinct populations of sandhill cranes in North America, the vast majority are part of the mid-continent population, shown on the map in gray. That population winters in the south central part of the U.S., in addition to northern Mexico. They stop here in central Nebraska in the spring before flying to Canada, Alaska, or even Siberia, where they stay during the short summer. At 5,000 to 7,000 miles one way, the migration route of the mid-continent sandhill crane population is the longest of any crane species in the world. While sandhill cranes stop and stage along the Platte River in Nebraska in the spring, when they fly back to their wintering grounds in the fall, they may stop overnight on the Platte. However, they do not stage here at that time. So why do we have so many cranes coming to central Nebraska in the spring? Well, they come here to rest and feed, to replenish their fat stores before continuing their migration north. They use sandbars in the Platte River as a safe place to roost at night and the surrounding fields and wetlands for food and rest during the day. Individual birds spend about one month here, during which time they add about 25% to their body weight. In total, around 1 million stage along an 80-mile stretch of the Platte River in the spring. During the height of the migration, on any given night, there may be over 200,000 sandhill cranes roosting in the five-mile stretch of the river that includes Rose Sanctuary. The 3,000 acres that comprise Rose Sanctuary is important for a variety of reasons. It provides essential habitat for sandhill cranes and critical habitat for hooping cranes during their spring migrations. We provide one of the world's most sought after wildlife experiences, hosting over 35,000 visitors each spring. This in turn allows us to help our guests understand the importance of the Platte River and the conservation work that is done here. Sandhill cranes are large birds ranging in height from three to four feet, weighing between six and 10 pounds and having wingspans of over six feet. Males and females are similar in coloration and size. Males are just slightly taller. When not in flight, their very long wings form a bustle that may be easily mistaken for a tail. Adults have a pale cheek and a red patch of skin called a crown on the top of their head. Young birds have feathers instead of the red crown. They have three long toes in front and one very short toe in back. This short toe makes it difficult to land and stay in trees, which is why they eat, nest, and sleep on the ground. Cranes are omnivorous. Essential nutrients are provided by invertebrates such as insects and worms and seeds and berries from wet meadows. After land near the Platte River went under cultivation in the late 1800s, cranes adapted and also began eating waste corn, which now provides 95% of their caloric intake. When flying, sandhill cranes stretch out their neck, their legs trail behind. Typically mating for life, they stay with each other throughout migration. When you see two flying together like this, they are likely a mated pair. Three cranes flying together is typically a family group. 
Offspring usually stay with their parents all winter and through part of the spring migration before striking out on their own. Cranes' calls are enhanced by their windpipe, which is coiled inside their sternum. It is possible to hear a sandhill crane call up to two and a half miles away. Hearing their vocalizations is an important part of the experience here at Rose Sanctuary, where you can hear hundreds and sometimes thousands of cranes calling to each other. This is what a typical adult call sounds like. Juveniles have a distinctive higher pitch voice that squeaks and whistles. Even when thousands of adults are calling, you can still hear the juveniles vocalizing. Here is an example of a unison call, which is used by parrot adults. The crane holding its head vertically is the male. Sandhill crane adults are gray, juveniles are rust colored. They are one of the very few bird species that actively paint their feathers a different color. When adults preen while on their northern nesting grounds, they smear rust colored mud on their feathers, likely as camouflage. While they molt their flight feathers in the summer, the rest of their feathers drop off and are replaced one by one over the course of the year. Now for some behaviors you will likely see during a visit to Rose Sanctuary. One of those is wing spreading, which may be used to show a crane's size and health or to intimidate another crane. Pre-flight behavior is easy to observe. The crane will stretch out its neck horizontally and then take a few steps forward before lifting off the ground. Other birds in close proximity, typically a family group, will usually take flight as well. Cranes are unique in the world of birds in that they dance year round, not just during the mating season. Their dancing is exuberant and a delight to observe. It can include moves such as jumping, ground stabbing, and stick tossing. Unlike displays by most other birds, crane dances are responsive. Their individual movements depend on what their partner is doing. Cranes have a number of notable territorial behaviors, which are easy to observe when they are here in large numbers. This includes the ruffle threat, which often ends in a bow with the crane displaying the red crown on its head. After reaching their breeding grounds, mated pairs build or repair their nests in wetlands using nearby plant materials. Females usually lay two eggs three days apart. Typically, only one chick survives. Once chicks hatch in late May, they are ready to walk after just a few hours. They then have just three short months to grow to adult size with their parents teaching them skills like dancing and flying. Cranes are mature at three years of age. They mate for life between their second and sixth year. First year mortality can be as high as 50%. However, they have a relatively long lifespan of up to 20 or more years. Their overall population of just over 1 million is holding steady and increasing slightly. Now for some information about hooping cranes, which are also truly beautiful birds. By 1941, they had been hunted almost to extinction, mostly to provide feathers for women's hats. There were only 21 left. However, they were brought back from the brink of extinction by one of the most ambitious and successful species recovery projects ever undertaken. While their population in 2023 numbered 836, 702 of which were in the wild, the rest were in captivity, hooping cranes are still endangered. One self-sustaining flock of the wild population migrates in the central flyway between Texas and Canada. A second group migrates to and from Wisconsin and Florida, and there are two non-migrating wild populations, one in coastal Louisiana and one in central Florida. Hooping cranes are much larger than sandhill cranes and are mostly white with black on their wings. They are typically seen here at Rose Sanctuary in late March or April as they migrate individually or in small groups. 
thanks to the habitat conservation work that we have been doing here since 1974, we have one of the highest frequencies of whooping crane stopovers on the Platte River. Over the last 100 years, the Platte River has become a working river and a working landscape, which has resulted in many changes that pose challenges for cranes and other wildlife species. Over 70% of the river's water is diverted for agriculture and other human needs. Upriver dams trap sediment and change the timing of spring high flows, which has allowed trees to take over, making the river channel narrow and too deep for cranes to use for roosting. Only 10% of the historic wetland habitat remains. And because of the risks that our changing climate poses on remaining water in the Platte River, which depends on snowmelt from the Rocky Mountains, sandhill cranes are identified as climate threatened by Audubon and other conservation organizations. But here at Rose Sanctuary, we use active management to help ensure suitable habitat exists for cranes and other species. For example, we clear woody vegetation and trees from river sandbars, the way scouring river flows once did. We restore wetlands and wet meadows along the river, which provides essential nutritional resources for wildlife. We do controlled burns to mimic prairie fires to promote native plant diversity. And where bison once worked the soil, we partner with local cattle ranchers to replicate grassland structure important for birds that use rose sanctuary. As a result of our habitat restoration work, this is what the Platte River looks like on Rose Sanctuary. The five miles of the river that we actively manage now provides a wide, shallow river with sandbars free of vegetation, all of which are essential to provide cranes a safe place to roost at night. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you during crane season.